last. Has anything happened? No. Were you worried? I just feel better when there's someone here come in. What's it like outside? Stifling. Lots of people. No more than usual. Do you mind if I open that a bit? Yes, go ahead. Well, uh, what will you have? Thanks. Nothing for the moment. So how did you sleep? Eventually, well, I would put it at six hours net. I woke up three times this morning because I needed to pee. No diarrhea. On the contrary. Then how about dreams? Nothing memorable, evidently. Look, uh, did you mind? No. So you're all right? Well, at first glance, I would seem to have no reason to complain today, but in all honesty, I couldn't assert that I'm getting up to the mark. You're nervous? Yes, well, I'm always nervous. And those shakes you had yesterday all gone? No, I'm afraid not. In fact, they're worse. Almost as though I didn't want to know. Is that somebody else? Nothing. Everything's okay. On, on top of that, I've got complications. A touch of vertigo, a suggestion of an upset stomach, loss of appetite, tingling in the joints, even the possibility of constipation. You mean you didn't go this morning? Are you sure it isn't just a hangover? My condition has some similarities to a hangover, but it's not a hangover in as much as I hardly touched a drop of yesterday. Perhaps something is the matter with you. No, I'm afraid not. Well, that's something to be thankful for, isn't it? Is it? I'd rather be ill than well myself. If only I could be sure they won't come. They can't be coming now. You really think so? Surely they can come at any time. Yes. Will you think of me? When? Well, when I'm there. You mustn't keep thinking of that I all don't the keep time. Thinking about it all the time. It just came into my head. I'm sorry. Why don't you go for a walk once in a while? Are you mad? Go out? Why not? I'm being nervous, wrecked the whole time, not knowing what's going Nothing's on. Nothing's going on back here. Yes, I know. How am I going to know that if I'm gadding about somewhere else? What if they were to come right then? They'd find you weren't at home. So what? No, I couldn't possibly. Is it them? Yes. Should I open the door? Yes, you have to. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Can we come in? I... yes, do. You 
don't remember us. Uh, no, no, I, I, I can't place you at the moment. We called on you once before. Two years ago, you've obviously forgotten. Yeah. I'm Sydney, and he's also Sydney. Oh, how do you do? We won't hold you up long. Yes, well, do sit down, please. Is it all right to smoke? Oh, yes, certainly. Actually, I don't smoke myself. I, I was asking for Sydney here. He smokes like a chimney. Oh. writing on. <laughs> if you need any, we can get you some. Oh, really? Since we work in a paper mill. You do? So, no problem. Ah, oh, Susanna, these, these gentlemen are from the paper mill. <laughs> it is, they've been here before. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We've got a lot of interesting stuff from the mill, minutes of meetings and so on. I'm sure you'd find it interesting. Yes, I'm, I'm sure I would. We'll bring it to you. We know everything. Every what thing? About you. Oh, I see. What Sydney's trying to say is, is that we're your fans. And not just us either. Well, thank you. There's lots of people looking to you. Yes, thank you. We all, we all believe that it will all turn out right for you in the end. Well, I'm not sure. Well, well, the main thing is you mustn't weaken. We need you, and we believe in you. You being the man you are. Thank you. We're not holding you up, are we? No, no. Are you sure? Because if we are, you only have to say so, and we'll, we'll push off. No, you're, you're not holding me up. <laughs> I know you prefer live theater to the cinema, but that's what I have tickets for tonight. This one is very good. Is this the one you bought last week? No. You no. Know, I'm just an ordinary sort of a bloke, a nobody. But I can't spot a few things, and I've got my own opinion, and yeah. no one can deny me that. <laughs> what I think is, there's a lot that could be done. Certainly more than is being done at the moment. Oh, yes, this is it. And speaking for myself, and for Sydney here, we reckon, and and this is partially why we're here. To our way of thinking, not all the possibilities have been exhausted yet. I would venture to say that the most promising possibilities are still ahead of us. You just have to, just have to take hold of the situation by the scruff of the neck. Yes, well, uh, what possibilities in particular did you have in mind? Well, that would require some discussion, of course. I mean, well, uh, at least tell me what direction we ought to be taking. Well, different directions all at the same time. Surely no one knows that better than you. In short, it seems to us that it's time to take an initiative, something that will make them sit up. Yes, well, uh, I'm not sure that uh, present circumstances differ <clears throat> significantly from the circumstances which have prevailed up to now, but <laughs> even so, I'm, I'm not a priori against an initiative. <laughs> Glad we agree. Who else but you can get things going again? Oh, well, that's for me. Uh, we realize things probably aren't very easy for you at the moment, but... The respect in which you're held puts you under an obligation. Yes, I know. You'll know what's best to do. After all, you're a philosopher. I'm an ordinary bloke, but nobody goes without saying. We're not forcing you. We haven't got the right. Furthermore, you can't be expected to do it for everybody all on your own. <laughs> but that said, what we think is, don't get me wrong, I'll let you have it straight. That said, we are of the opinion that you could be doing more than you are in your place. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll think it's over. We're always saying this because we're your fans, and not just us. Well, thank you. A lot of people are looking to you. The main thing is, you mustn't weaken. We believe in you, and we need you. Thank you. We're not holding you up, are we? Oh, oh no. Are you sure? Because if we are, you only have to say so, and we'll push no, on. No, no, you're, you're not holding me up. What is playing at the cinema? Well, the tickets are for a, Ger for a Jerry Lewis movie. Is it just or subtitled? It doesn't really matter with Jerry Lewis, does it? Yes, it does, very much. I like to hear his voice. I just like to watch 
One could certainly do more. Just have to take hold of the situation by the scruff of the neck. Who else but you is there to get things going well, again? as for me. We have faith in you. And we need you. Yes. We're not holding you up, are we? No. Are you really sure? Because if we are, you only have to say so. You're not push holding up. Me. Excuse me, woman. Next week, I'm going to buy tickets to the theater. I'll go. It's not much worth seeing anymore, and it always is sort of uncomfortable. Uh, it's not uncomfortable. I mean, it's a wonderful experience. Cinemas are cooler, darker, and people aren't emoting. You mean they're more romantic? <laughs> yes. The main thing is, you mustn't weaken. Just a minute. What's up? So that hear someone come. I can't hear anything. The respect in which you're held puts you under an obligation. <laughs> Friend of mine. Lucy. Hello, Leopold. Come on in. I see you have company. Oh uh, yes, these are these are friends from the paper mill. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Miss. Well, do sit down. think it's time to take the initiative. <laughs> well, they, they've got something there. Have I come at the wrong moment? You were obviously in the middle of discussion. Oh, no, 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 it's all right. Uh, look, uh, have you had supper? No. Oh, we're having little. Would you like to stay? That would be lovely. Oh, yes. Stifling today. Stifling and humid. Yes. Edward opened the balcony door, but I closed it again. <laughs> I don't like drafts. Edward here? Oh, yes. Coming on. <laughs> 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 I, I, I still have a few things. 
things yet to do. What do you have to do? Things. <laughs> make some notes, uh, make supper. <laughs> Never stops. We must have a chat. I have so much to tell you. Me too. But some other time, all right? I'm in a rush. Oh, are you going out? I have tickets for the cinema. Oh, what a shame. I was looking forward to seeing you. Well, we shall look in on you soon. Oh, yes, fine. And we'll bring you that writing paper. Oh, fine. And also the stuff from the paper mill. Yes, fine. The main thing is, keep your chin up. <laughs> Thank you. When are you expecting them? All the time. We're with you. Stick with it. Yeah. Yeah. So long. Yes, so long. <laughs> so long. May I ask you who that was? Yes, well, I have no idea. <laughs> they wanted something from me. I'm not sure what. I'm sure they mean well. That sort of thing happens all the time around here. But I've got to run. So long for now. Oh. Bye, Susie. Bye bye. Bye. Love me. Mm. Really? Mm, really. And why don't you say so sometimes without being asked first? You've never wanted to. As you know, I, I avoid orthopedic expressions. The simple truth is you're ashamed of loving me. Uh, no. Phenomenology has taught me always to beware of the propositional statement that lies outside demonstrable experience. I prefer <laughs> to say less than I feel rather than to risk saying more. <laughs> and you think that loving me is outside demonstrable experience. Yes, well, well we, we may mean different things by the word love. Perhaps, though the difference is small, the word denotes for me something uh, on a higher plane than for you. Just a minute. What is it? I thought I heard someone coming. I don't hear anything. Forgive me, Lucy, but uh, does our love have to consist solely in this endless examination of itself? Well, what do you expect when you're so evasive all well, the time? Like all women, you long for security, and we men look for something higher. Uh, just my love to keep picking lovers with a permanent prick in their neck. Don't be disgusting. What do you mean? Please do not use the word lover. At least do not apply it to me. Why? It's disgusting. Why? Because it turns man into nothing but an ever naked prick. Who's being <laughs> disgusting now? Won't you sit down? <laughs> um, can I get you anything? Is there any wine? Oh, you. Yeah. Well, cheers. Uh, cheers. So tell me. What? Well, what 
did you do today? Oh, I don't know. Did you write? Well, I wanted to, but nothing came. Did you have your depression again? Yes, that was another thing. You won't get rid of it until you start writing again. Everybody's waiting yes, for your new piece. Yes, just the trouble. You had it all worked out. What do you mean? Well, just, just what you've been telling me, that, that love is actually a dimension of being, that it gives fulfillment and meaning to existence. Well, I couldn't have made it sound like such a cliche, sure. Mm. Well, no doubt you put it better. You know, it's funny, but when I run out of excuses for putting off writing and finally make my mind up to start, I stumble over the first banality. Pencil or pen? Which piece of paper? And then this thing starts. What thing? Well, the cycle thing. What's that? Well, my thoughts just start going round and round in a loop. Hmm. <sighs> do, we, do we have to talk about me? You love talking about yourself. That's just what you think. Leopold? Yes? I can help you break out of that. Oh? How? You need love. Real love. Mad, passionate love. Not that theoretical one that you're writing about. Yes, I'm a bit old for that, I think. <laughs> you are not old. You just have an emotional block. Unlock you. since you went out? I don't know. Ages. You don't go out at all, then? No. How much do you drink? Same as everyone else. Starting in the morning? Yes, as the case may be. <laughs> do you ever dream about them, or dream that you're there already? Sometimes. Leopold, 
Yes. You don't doubt, do you, that we all like you? No, I, I know. <laughs> Leopold? Just a minute. Vitamins? Yes. Apart from the vitamins, are you uh, on anything else? Not really, won't you? Ask. Uh, there's some talk. Yes, what sort of talk? Forget it. Quite a few people complain that uh, you never answer letters. Well, I never was much of a letter writer. <laughs> well, there's no law about it. Still, it's a pity that it lends support oh, to the rumors. We, we, what rumors? That you're no longer reliable, so... I refer to anything important. Perhaps something got lost in the post somewhere. <laughs> what did you think of that collection? What collection? The stuff I lent you the other day. <clears throat> oh, yes. Have you read it? Well, to tell you the truth. It's essential reading. Yes, I know it's essential reading. That's why I couldn't just glance through it. There's a mood for everything. One can't just read anything at any time. <laughs> Leopold. Yes. You don't doubt, do you, that we all like you? Yes, I, I know. Leopold? Just a minute. Leopold. Yes. It goes without saying it's your own business. Yes, what is? You don't have to account to me. What? I'm asking as a friend. I know. You truly have seen you, sir? <coughs> well, it, it, it's not that, sir. <laughs> and how are things between you and Susanna? Well, uh, we get along. Leopold. Yes? You don't doubt, do you, that we all like you? I know. Leopold! Just a minute. Terrible, of course, to live with this nerve-wracking uncertainty. We all understand that. None of us knows how we'd be able to stand it ourselves. That's why so many people are concerned about you. You have to understand that. Oh, I do understand. I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm really here on behalf of everyone. Who's everyone? Your friends. Are you an emissary? If you want to call it that. And what are you concerned about specifically? How should I put it? I don't want to be hard on you or hurt you in any way, but on the other hand, I wouldn't be acting as your friend if I were to be less than frank. Yes, sir. What are you concerned about specifically? How should I put it? It's not simply a general issue. It's mostly about you, personally. And what are you concerned about specifically? How should I put it? Simply, there's growing circumstantial evidence giving rise to certain speculations. So what circumstantial evidence, what speculations? Your friends. And I won't deny I include myself. You all know, for some time begin to question whether you might not crack under the strain. Whether you'll really need the claims which are, the claims which are made on you. That you'll be able to fulfill the expectations which, forgive me, are rightly expected of you. That you'll be, in short, up to your mission, which is to do justice to those great obligations, to the truth, to the world, to everyone for whom you set an example set by your own work. Forgive me, but quite simply, we are beginning to be slightly afraid that you might let us down, and in so doing, bring upon yourself Forgive me. It would be bound to be so, given your sensitivity. Bring upon yourself endless agony. You're not angry, are you, that I'm speaking so openly? No, no, on the, on the contrary. Leopold! Just a minute! It's terrible, of course, to live with this nerve-wracking uncertainty. We all understand that. None of us knows how we'd be able to stand it ourselves. That's why so many people are concerned about you. You have to understand that. Yes, I do understand. The more they count on you, the harder it would be for them if you failed to hold out in some way. People are calling on me all the time. Not long ago, a couple of lads from the paper mill turned up. Typical workers, ordinary people. That's certainly excellent, but how should I put it? 
pot. The question is whether a visit from a couple of paper mill workers, excellent though it is in itself, is simply or might become simply, forgive me, a, a kind of inaction in action. Left over from a world which is no longer the case. Whether you might not be playing the role in a mechanical, superficial way in order to assure yourself that you are still the person to whom that role properly belonged. What is at stake here is that a gap should not open up between you and your role in society. So that your role, which was a true reflection of your personality, becomes a crutch to prop you up. Circumstantial evidence of a supposed continuity of personality, but spurious, illusory, self-deceiving, by means of which you, you try to assure the world and yourself that you are still the person who, in fact, you no longer are. In short, that your role, which grew naturally out of your attitudes and your work, should not become a mere substitute. And that you don't attach to that role, which has long since kept going autonomously on its own momentum. Don't attach to it the sole and lasting proof of your moral existence. And thus let your entire human identity hang on a visit from a couple of no-nothing workers from the paper mill. You're not angry, are you, that I'm speaking so openly? No, on the contrary. Leopold! Just a minute! It's terrible, of course, to live with this nerve-wracking uncertainty. We all understand that. None of us knows how we'd be able to stand it ourselves. That's why so many people are concerned about you. You, you have to understand that. Yes, but I, I do understand. You must believe me, too, that all I wish for is that we're worrying about nothing. I do believe you. And even if this danger which we, your friends, worry about is infinitesimal, I have a duty to you, to myself, to all of us, to confess those words to you. I understand. By all the things you did and have been doing up to now, you have earned our respect and our love. And in so doing, you have suffered a great deal. Obviously, you are not Superman, and the oppressive atmosphere in which you have had to live is bound to have left its mark. But all that said, I can't escape the awful feeling that lately something inside of you has begun to collapse, as if an axis that has held you together has given way, as if the power were collapsing under your feet, as, as if you've gone lame inside. You are tending more and more to act the part of yourself instead of being yourself. Your personal life, that vital plank is... Don't be angry. In a mess. <laughs> Lacking a fixed point out of which everything inside of you would grow and develop. You're losing the strength and perhaps even the will to put your affairs in order. You're erratic. You're letting yourself be tossed about by chance currents. You're sinking deeper and deeper into a void, and you can't get a grip on things. You're just waiting for what is going to happen. And so you're no longer the self-aware subject of your life. You're turning into its passive object. Obviously, you are at the mercy of great demons, but they do not drive you in any direction. They merely drive about inside of you. Your existence seems to have become a cumbersome burden to you, and you have really settled for listening helplessly to the passing of the time. What happened to your perspective on things, to your humor, to your industry and persistence, the pointedness of your observations, your irony and self-irony, your capacity for enthusiasm, for emotional involvement, for commitment, even for sacrifice. I fear for you, Leopold. I fear for us. We need you. We need you the way you used to be. You have no idea how we need you. So I'm asking you to swear that you won't give up. Don't weaken. Keep at it. Get a grip on yourself. Pull yourself together. Straighten up. Leopold. Yes. You don't doubt, do you, that we all like you? <laughs> I know. So, I beg you,
He again met brilliantly upon Nettles, whom everybody held on high. Bertram! Oh, Lucy. Can't you see he's cold? He never mentioned it. Also, it's late. Yes, of course. Uh, I didn't realize. Uh, forgive me, I'm sorry. I'm just going. Uh, no need to rush off. Uh, stay the night if you like. No, thank you, and uh, <laughs> so long. So long. And don't be offended. That's quite all right. It was presumptuous of me. So long. Cheerio. Do come again sometime. <laughs> Glad to. <coughs> I didn't have to push him out like that. He would have been sitting here all night, and I want him for myself. He had so little time. It's not the best thing in the world that he saw you here. Why? You know how much talk there's going to be now? So what? Or are you ashamed of me? It's not that. Well, then why do you treat me like a stranger in front of other people? I don't, do I? Yes, you do. I can't remember when you took my hand in company. Oh. Touched me? Not even a fond glass. Hadn't we better go to bed. No, no. Why? Because I want to have a serious talk with you. About our relationship? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, at least fetch me a blanket. easy for me. You know, I have to make a few sacrifices. What I'm trying to say is reluctantly, but I must say it. Look, I respect your idiosyncrasies. Oh, if you mean what happened, but what didn't happen, I mean in there, then I've already told you that I have not been feeling up to the mark today. <laughs> that wasn't what I meant. But if we're going to talk about it, there are other reasons behind it. Yes, such as? You're simply blocked. You're censoring yourself. You're afraid to give in to any emotion or experience. You're, you're controlling, observing. You're watching yourself every minute. You're thinking about it. So it becomes duty rather than pleasure. Then, of course, it doesn't work. But that's my problem. I wasn't going to talk about it tonight. About what, then? Everything I've done for us. I've done freely and willingly, and I'm not complaining, and I don't want anything in return. I just want you to admit what is true. What do you mean? That we're seeing each other, that we're lovers, that we love each well, other. have I ever denied it? Forgive me, <laughs> but you do everything you can to deny it, to make it invisible, to avoid acknowledging it. You behave as if it wasn't there. Look, I'm possibly more reserved about some things than I should be, but <laughs> forgive me. You're hardly to blame. Me? How? Well, you know I'm afraid of you. Me? <laughs> your ceaseless effort to give a name to our relationship, to make your status somehow official, the way you defend your territory while quietly, but oh yes, relentlessly trying to enlarge it, the way you discuss it endlessly. For well, that, quite naturally, makes me defensive. And by my reserve, by wariness, perhaps, yes, even by a mild cynicism, I have been compensating for a subconscious fear of being manipulated. If not <laughs> to I reproach myself bitterly for my behavior, but I'm not able to overcome it. But I ask so little of you. You must know that I live only for you and through you, and all I want you to do is admit to yourself that you love me. And I believe you do love me. I don't believe you are incapable of love. I don't believe that my love is incapable of awakening love even in you. 
I'm on your side. Without love, no one is a complete human being. We only find an identity through the person sitting next to us. Isn't that how you put it in your ontology of the human self? <laughs> you'll see that if you'll get rid of these ridiculous inhibitions, you'll come alive again. And even your work will be better than you can imagine. I feel sorry for you, Lucy. <laughs> Why? Because you deserve someone better than me. I'm, I'm just worthless. I don't like hearing you talk about yourself No, that way. it's true, Lucy. I can't get rid of the awful feeling that lately something has begun to collapse inside me. As if some axis which was holding me together had started to break. The ground collapsing under my feet as if I'd gone lame inside. I sometimes have the feeling that I'm that I'm acting the part of myself instead of being myself. <laughs> I'm lacking. I'm lacking a fixed point out of which I, everything inside me can grow and develop. I'm letting myself be tossed about by chance currents. I'm, I'm sinking deeper and deeper into, into a void and I can no longer get a grip on things. In truth, I, I, I'm just waiting for this thing that's going to happen. And I'm no longer the self-aware subject of my life. I'm becoming merely a passive object. You know, I sometimes have the feeling that I'm doing nothing but listening helplessly to the time going by. I mean, what happened to my perspective on things, my humor, my industry and consistency, the pointedness of my observations, my irony, my self-irony, my capacity for enthusiasm, for emotional involvement, for commitment, even for sacrifice? The oppressive atmosphere in which I've been forced to live for so long is, is bound to have left its mark. <laughs> I go on acting the role as if, well, as if nothing has happened, but inside I'm no longer the person that you all obviously take me for. I mean, it's hard for me to admit it, but if I can, surely all the more reason for you to, huh? Mm. Ah, it's a touching and a beautiful thing that you don't give up hope of making me into someone better than I am, but uh, don't be angry. It, it's an illusion. I, I've fallen apart. I'm paralyzed. I won't change. And it would be the best thing if they came for me now and took me where I would no longer be the cause of unhappiness and disillusion. Lucy? There, there, Lucy, what's the matter? <laughs> are you crying, Lucy? Well, why are you crying? That's okay. Don't cry. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to, I just didn't realize. Oh, don't touch me! Loretta, leave me alone! What have I done now? You're a worse case than I thought! How do you mean? All this talk, it's nothing but excuses. You sang a different tune the first time you got me to stay with you. You said our relationship would restore some of your lost integrity, that it would renew your hope that it would put you back together emotionally, that it would open a new door to a new life. You only say what suits you. No, Leopold, you're no broken wreck. You're an ordinary bullshit artist. <laughs> You've had enough of me, and now you want to get shot of me, so now you paint a picture of your ruin so that, so that I'll understand there's nothing more I can expect from you. And on top of that, to make me feel sorry for you. You're a ruin, all right. You're ruined, but not the way you say. It's your dishonesty that shows how ruined you are. Simpleton that I am, I thought that I could awaken love in you, that I could give you back your zest for life, that I could help you. You're beyond help. Serves me right. One great illusion less. You're, you're, you're really being unfair, Lucy. I, I am going through a crisis. Even Bertram says so. Please don't go on. <laughs> There's really no point. I'm going to get dressed. Don't be silly, Lucy. This is no way to pass. <laughs> them. What are we going to do? I don't know. You go in the bedroom. I'll let them in. No, no, no. I'll stay here with you.
I suppose you know who we are. Yes, I. Oh. You thought we wouldn't come anymore today, did you? I realize you can come at any time. Uh, we must apologize for the intrusion. <laughs> Obviously, you had other plans for the evening. What plans I have is my own business. We possibly won't keep you long. That all depends on you. Hmm. It's a pleasure to meet you. According to our colleagues, you're a sensible chap. So with luck, we'll soon come to an understanding. Well, I don't see what there is to understand. I've got my things ready. I just need time to dress. Well, what's the hurry? This may not come to the worst. Yes, but we must ask the lady to kindly leave. I'm staying. <laughs> no, no, no. You're leaving. No, my, my friend can't leave now. Why? She has nowhere to go. Well, in that case, we'll put her up for the night. I won't. Watch. Necessary, was it? You don't have to worry about your girlfriend. No one's going to harm her. After she comes to her senses, we'll take her home. <laughs> you don't think we'd let her run the streets of a candlewood bedspread? Well, we're not inhuman. I mean, you can be sure of that. Incident. I mean, but don't give it another thought. Oh, we're better off this way. It wouldn't have been very nice for you to have your girlfriend see this. Miss Susanna isn't at home. We know she's at the cinema. Won't you talk to us? What are you writing right at the moment, may one ask? No harm in asking. When was the last time you went out? I don't know. Ah, it was some time ago, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Vitamins? Yes. Apart from vitamins, are you uh, on anything? Not really. Why do you ask? Well, there's been some talk. What sort of talk? Forget it. <laughs> How much do you drink? Same as everyone else. Starting in the morning. Yes, as the case may be. Well, look, Professor, we won't drag this out unnecessarily. We're here because we've been given the job of, uh, of putting a proposition to you. Proposition? Yes. As you know only too well, you're being threatened with something unpleasant, which I personally wouldn't wish upon you, and I don't suppose you're particularly looking forward to it yourself. Well, I don't know. It might be better than the situation. <laughs> now, 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 Professor. Mm -hmm. No blasphemy. Yes, as you've been told many times before, it's not our business to put these things to pressure like this. No. We like to avoid confrontation so that, if possible, things don't come to the world. It's not in our interest. No, and in some cases where there's uh, no better alternative, we even look for ways to, uh, to achieve our object without going down every twist and turn of the path. And we always try to give people an option. Yes, and that's why we're here. We've been given the job of notifying you that uh, under certain conditions, uh, this whole matter could be, uh, could be dropped. Drop? How? Uh, this whole thing could be declared null and void. Just under what conditions? Well, as you know, 
What's coming to you is coming to you because under the name of Professor Leopold Nettles, you put together a certain paper. An essay, as you call it. And you never denied it. Which in effect, therefore, you brought the whole thing upon yourself. By this act of non-denial, you unmasked the perpetrator. As a man of wide knowledge, you must be aware that if the perpetrator is not known, one cannot proceed against him. Uh, this is known as the principle of the identity of the perpetrator. In a word, if you're willing to sign a short statement saying that you're not Professor Leopold Nettles, author of the paper in question, then this, uh, this whole thing could be considered null and void and all previous decisions rescinded. If I understand you correctly, you want me to declare that I'm no longer me? <laughs> well, <laughs> that way of putting it might do for a philosopher. <laughs> but from a legal point of view, of course, it, it doesn't make any sense. Obviously, it's not a matter of you declaring that you are no longer you, but only declaring that you are not the same person who was the author of that this, this thing. Yes. Essentially, it's a, it's a formality. Uh, one name being like another name. Or do you think that Nettles is such a beautiful name that you couldn't bear to lose it? One only has to look in the telephone book to see that there are many other equally nice names. And most of them even nicer. Even nicer. nicer. <laughs> you mean that I have to change my name? Not at all, Professor. You can have whatever name you like. That's entirely up to you. And no one, at least in this instance, can care less. The main thing that's important here is whether you are or are not the Nettles who wrote that paper. Yeah, if you insist on keeping your name, for sentimental reasons, and by all means keep it. Though there's no denying that it would be neater if you were to decide otherwise. It would be neater, but not essential. After all, there may be more than one Leopold Metal. There are three, just as a thought so. In other words, it's not so much a question of whether you are Nettles or Nichols, <laughs> but rather whether you are the Nettles who wrote that paper? You have to admit it's a good offer. Mm. But I don't understand what you'll achieve by it, or why therefore you're proposing it. As far as I know, you do nothing without the reason. Our interest is in sweeping this unpleasant business from the slate and giving you one more chance. What chance? To keep out of trouble until the next time. I, I don't like it much. Now. Whether you like it or not is your own affair. Nobody's trying to force you to do anything, and no one can force you. But I'm telling you man to man that you'd be making a mistake if you didn't go along with this. It's a free gift. No one would know a thing, as long as you didn't go prattling on about it. And even if it did get around, uh, everyone would understand why you're doing it. They'd all do exactly the same. Uh, many of them have already done it. Why well, haven't they done them none? If uh, you're hesitating, then the only explanation I can think of is that uh, you have no idea what's coming to you. Would I have to do it right this minute? That would be best, of course. No, this is definitely serious enough to require some reflection. If you want to take the risk. What risk? Look, we've been given the job of notifying you of what we've notified you. We don't make the decision. It's a small fry. Yes, we can't be expected to know, of course, what the relevant authorities are going to make of this. All we can pass on your request, which I may consider. Make any difference to them if it's going to be today or the day after tomorrow? No, you must understand that their goodwill is not like some kind of balloon that can be expanded indefinitely. Don't be a fool, man. There's a chance. With one stroke of the pen, get rid of all that's piled on your head. All the shit. Chance for a completely fresh start. Once in a lifetime. But I wouldn't give for such a chance. Let's have a look.
Well, what's it to be?
Yes? They were here. They were? Yes. When? During the night. How come you're here? Oh, oh I, I can do it back. Did you promise them anything? No. Did you get yourself into trouble again no. somehow? What happened then? Well, when you went out to the cinema with Edward, Lucy and I cooked ourselves that liver. Cooked it in what? Well, in a frying pan. Which one? The new one. And you left it in the mess? No, we scrubbed it. With what? With washing powder. I might have known. No better. Look, you can take a look. It's okay. Well, we talked for a while. Then Bertram came, apparently on behalf of several friends. He said they were concerned about me, that I was in a bad way, that my whole life was in a mess, but I, that I wasn't doing anything. I've been telling you that for ages. When he left, Lucy and I, we had a bit of a row. About what? Well, it, it's complicated. Basically, she says I don't love her enough, that, I, that I'm evasive, that I don't make it clear in company that we belong to each other and so on. And, and then when I honestly tried to explain to her, she said I was making up excuses. Well, does that surprise you? Because, well, I, mean, I know what she means. What am I supposed to do? Well, then you don't know. Before she could leave, they came and then because she insisted on staying, they all into the room and they dragged her off. Is she out yet? I don't know, perhaps. What do you mean you don't know? Haven't you gone to see her? Well, I can't possibly leave here, can I? Not now! Of course. What about them? Well, apparently, uh, I won't have to go there if, if, I, if I make a statement that I'm not the author of that. If I simply say I'm somebody else. Somebody else? That would just suit them. Look, they're not yourself. asking me to make a value judgment. They only want a formal excuse to drop the whole thing. Shh. Well, they're obviously worried that once I got there, it would only increase the respect in which I'm held. Whereas if you were to recap, you would lose it all. Obviously, that would be much more to their liking. I hope you threw them out. I, I asked for time to consider. What? There's nothing to it, surely. Have you gone mad? What is there to consider? That's just showing them they're halfway to breaking you, and now they'll increase the pressure. I knew the moment I saw you, you had got yourself into trouble. You wet. Yes. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> if you can't take it, you should never have got into it. Susanna? Leave me alone.
Has anything happened? I ran three times. Oh, I was getting myself together. Can I open that a bit? Yes, go ahead. I'm relieved to find you here. Oh, you know this. Lucy came to see me. So she's out. What did they want? Oh, to negotiate. Did you sign anything? I asked for time to... When will they be back? They never say! You ought to go and see Lucy. Look, she's having a hard time with one way or another. Susanna at home. Yes. Just uh, asking for you. Leave it open a while. It's a nice outfit you're wearing. It's a dinner jacket. <laughs> my uncle lent it to me. Yes, I, I know it's a dinner jacket. It's nice. <laughs> you know my uncle? How did you sleep? Uh, hardly at all. You couldn't get them out of your mind, could you? <laughs> did you go this morning? Yes, yes. Well, that's something anyway. Yes, not much of a thing, as it happens. <laughs> What did you eat? Well, I, I wasn't hungry. I uh, ate two onions and five almonds to calm myself down. And did it? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, the main thing is that you're here. Oh, yes. So I'd rather be there than here like this. I mean, why can't I get my life clear? It used to be so wonderful when I, when no one expected anything from me, no one was interested in me, no one urged me to do things. I used to just browse around the second-hand bookshops, studying the modern philosophers at my leisure, making notes from their works and the evening taking walks in the park, meditating. Why can't I change my name to Nichols, say, and forget everything and start a completely new life? Perhaps you need some of your pills. I, I splash water on my face. I don't need pills. I, I don't want to get dependent on them. <laughs> it's nothing. Leopold, come on. Be silly, Leopold. Face up to it. I'll tell them you're not at home if you would like, but better if you just get it over with. Good afternoon. Oh. Oh. 
isn't a professor in. Come on. Good afternoon. Here we are, Professor. <laughs> Excellent. We've got it. Look. These are blank papers. Okay. These are normal office issue. These are for carbon copies. These are carbon papers. And here we have various envelopes and files and so on. Yes. Well, is this all for me? Of course. Oh, well, how, how much do I owe you? Oh, do me a favor, Professor. What do you take us for? Well, thank you very much. I, I'm sure I've got We're more interested in what you'll be writing on those bits of paper. <laughs> well, and here's the stuff from our plants. These are minutes of the Board of Management. These are minutes of the meetings of all the paper mill employees. These are specimens of factory correspondence, various memos, internal regulations, instructions for the workforce, overtime summaries. And this, especially interesting, that's from the personnel department, personal records of employees, various uh, returns, complaints, denunciations. We think it'll make very nice reading for you. Use it as you see fit. If you could do anything with this, it certainly would be a bombshell. Yes, Absolutely. So Where do you want it? Where? Yes, yeah, so, oh, over in that corner, please. That would be the best. Well, uh, there's a lot of it. <laughs> For you, we'd steal the whole paper mill if yeah. you had to. Thank you. Strike while the iron is hot. That's what me and Sydney always say. Yes, very, very, very well put. <laughs> I don't know how I'm ever going to repay you. Oh. What is there to repay? We've already told you that we're your fans. It's not just There's us. There's lots of people looking to you. Yeah, thank you. expecting you so soon. Well, one must strike while the iron is hot. That's what me and Sydney always say. Yeah, very well put. Well, I don't know how I'm ever going to repay you. What is there to repay? We've already told you we're your fans, and not just us. There's lots of people looking to you. I don't know how I'm going to repay you. What is there to repay? We've already told you that we're your fans. Not just us. There's lots of people looking to you. Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
I've got some today. <laughs> but could I ask you for something else? Oh, yes, uh, at your disposal. Would there be any chance for a glass of rum? Oh, yes, of course. Yes. Uh, just to clarify, I'm a teetotaler. I'm only asking for Sydney here. Huh? He drinks like a fish. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Ah. Thanks. Cheers. Ah. Thanks. Cheers. Ah. Ah. Susanna, um, these gentlemen have brought me all this paper and all sorts of other interesting things. Where is it going to go? I don't know. I'll, I'll find a place to wear. That's a, a very pretty dress you're wearing. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Ah. Thanks. Cheers. Someone's got to be sensible. <laughs> We're not holding you up, are we? No. Are you sure? Because if we are, you only have to say so, and we'll push you up. No, you're not holding me up. Only excuse me a moment. Are you looking forward to the dance tonight? What more if I knew where Lucy was? Lucy's fine. She came to see me. She's all right. She's all right. No sense, but she's all right. Did she tell you what they want him to sign? talking about yesterday, that it's time for an initiative. Yes, well, I, I haven't got around to it yet. <laughs> Pity. You know, I'm just an ordinary bloke, a nobody, but I can spot a few things. I've got my own opinions, and no one can deny me that. What I think is, there's lots that could be done. Certainly more than is being done at the moment. One just has to take hold of this situation by the scruff of the Who else but you is there to get things going again? We're not holding you up, are we? No, no, no. Are you sure? Because if we are, you only have to say so and we'll push off. No, 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 you're not holding me up. Excuse me a moment. What about going away next weekend? Where to? Country? That's wonderful. Bertram's place? Maybe. If not, we'll just get a place somewhere else. Maybe we can ask Lucy to come with us. So. No? How about Bertram? That thing you wrote, even if we don't fully understand it, we're ordinary people. The fact that you're right behind it, regardless of the consequences, straight away leads one to hope that you will take the final step. What step? Well, I'm not very good at explaining myself, but let me put it like this. That whatever it is you're writing, you'll turn it into something that will have some practical effect. To put it quite simply, you'll come up with a payoff for all your philosophizing. Yes, well, you see, the, the trouble is that opinions differ greatly about just what the payoff is. Oh, you'll find it. Who else but you could get things going again? I say that's just what people are waiting for. People? Everybody! Well, isn't that a bit of an exaggeration? Oh, forgive me, but you don't realize... What? Your responsibility. Well, I mean, for what? For everything. We're not holding you up, are we? No. Are, are you, you really sure? Because if, if we, we are, are, you only have to say so, and we'll push on. No, 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 you're not holding me up. Excuse me. <laughs> you want to go out and eat after the dance? Yeah, I'd love to. I have a cauliflower. We could come back here and eat. No, I don't feel like eating cauliflower. Where should we go? Wherever you like. Sydney and I were giving it a bit of thought the other day. We got the following idea. 
what I did. We think it's quite good. It's what it's I good. did. Exactly the step that people are waiting for you to take. What step? That you should write a kind of declaration. What kind of? Declaration? Yeah. We have general sort of declaration covering all the bases. It would have to be brief and easy to understand. In other words, you'd have to spend some time on it. We've got plenty of paper now. <laughs> Forgive me, gentlemen, but I'm not quite clear about uh, what really. Oh, are you living? Why? Well, well, well. I mean, I, I thought since you managed to get that cauliflower, and since I need to examine everything calmly and calm myself down to discuss with you all sorts of things. Forgive me, Leopold, but I've got tickets to a dance. I bought them ages ago. Yes, I, I, I see. I see. It's my first dance of the year. I understand. Understand. Not that I know what there is to consider. I've already given you my opinion. Yes, I know. It doesn't matter. It's all right. Well, so long. So long, Leopold. Get to bed early. Get some sleep. Why aren't you clear of that? You were saying that you weren't clear about something. Was I? Oh, oh yes. yes. Look, uh, don't be angry, gentlemen, but I'm not quite clear about... About what? Well, well uh, what is exactly that you want to know? <sighs> Professor Fukibani has got it wrong. We don't want any. seem to be implying that we're confusing you. No, 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 I'm not suggesting anything. Uh, you were saying that you weren't clear about what we want from you. I'm not exactly sure what I was saying. But we know! I don't want to be hard on you or hurt you in any way. Were you worried? You get yourself in trouble again. I'm uh, not just speaking for myself. Perhaps you need some help. You say it is true that we're funny when you are saying you were saying. This could be what people are waiting for. You'll find a way. What is there to consider for me? Cold. 
Oh, yes, excuse me. I know your work. Oh, really? Which? Phenomenology, responsibility, ontology of the human self, you love and nothingness. Several times. Whoa, I'm impressed. I hear ontology of the human self has gotten you into some trouble. Yes, it's because of that that I'm supposed to go there. Straight there, go oh, home. Oh. Paragraph 501, intellectual fluidity. That's awful. Yes, yes, the sort of world we're living in. But such beautiful thoughts. Mm. Well, apparently someone didn't do any work. And it's indefinite. Well, I can get out of it by denying that I've ever worked. Is that what they're offering? Yes. They're disgusting.
to love Marguerite. Honesty deserves honesty. Now, if, if I am able to understand you, then it is mainly because I find myself in a similar, if not perhaps worse, situation than you. You! I can't believe it! You know so much! You've achieved so yes, much! You're so wise! that guarantees nothing! I'm only a silly girl, but no, you! You're not silly! I am. I know it. I know you're clever, Marguerite. And what's more? Well, beautiful. Me. Whatever next. <laughs> I'll be very frank with you, Marguerite. I'm in a bad way. I know life has been hard on you, but you seem so strong. Yes, a life has only appearance. In reality, I've had the feeling for some time now that something inside me has begun to collapse. <laughs> As if some axis which was holding me together has started to break the ground, crumbling under my feet. And I, I lack a fixed point out of which everything inside me can grow and develop. In truth, I'm just waiting for this thing that's going to happen. I sometimes have a feeling that, that, that I'm just listening helplessly to the passing of the time. And gone is the perspective I once had. My humor, my industry and persistence, the pointedness of my observations. How beautifully you put it. Oh, you should have known me before. <laughs> it's all gone. My irony, my self-irony, my capacity for enthusiasm, for emotional involvement, for commitment, even for sacrifice. This might disappoint you, Marguerite, but uh, for some time now, I have not been the person that you obviously take me to be. Basically, I'm, well, I'm just a tired, dried out, broken man. You don't have to speak like that, Professor. You're too hard on yourself. But even if it were all true, the very fact that you're reflecting upon the situation shows that all is not lost. Well, you're good to me, Marguerite. Oh, no, please, don't, don't call me Professor. I'm so formal. What are you drinking? <laughs> so many people think so highly of you. Doesn't that alone give you strength? Well, on, the, on the contrary, I often say to myself how wonderful it was when nobody was interested in me. Nobody was expecting anything from me. Nobody urged me to do things. You know, I, I used to just browse around the second-hand bookshops, studying the modern philosophers at my leisure, spending the evenings making notes from their work, taking walks in the park, meditating. But it's because of all that that you are what you are today. Yes, that's very true. You know, it's also true that I've taken upon myself a heavier burden than I'm able to bear. Leopold, I believe that you will win through. I have a feeling that my only way out is to accept a turn there, or somewhere far away from my nearest and dearest, to put my humble faith in a higher will, to give myself a chance to atone for my guilt, to lose my apathy, to regain my pride, and as a nameless cog in a giant machine, to, to purify myself. Thus, and only thus, if I am able to drain the bitter cup of dignity, I can perhaps get back something of my lost human integrity, renew the hope inside me, reconstitute myself emotionally, open the door to a new life. But Leopold! Yes? Don't you understand? The punishment is deeply unjust, and if you try, however honorably, to turn it into a purifying experience, you'd just be agreeing with it, and so prostrating yourself before it. And what's more, by giving it the so-called meaning, you're hiding from yourself the fact that you're clinging on to it as a kind of escape for your life. A way out of your problems. But however far they send you, punishment won't solve what you can't solve yourself. Don't you understand you've done nothing? So there's nothing to atone. You're innocent. Oh, Marguerite, why didn't I meet you before it was too late? <laughs> Leopold? Yes? Do you love anybody? Well, dear girl, I'm not sure I'm capable of love. Don't tell me that you've never felt anything towards a woman. Well, nervous, uh, nervousness, perhaps. <laughs> More with some with others. You need love. Mad, passionate, true love. Didn't you yourself write in Phenomenology of Responsibility that a person who doesn't love doesn't exist? Only love will give you the strength to stand up to them. Oh, 
It's all very well for you to say, Marguerite, but then where would one find it? <coughs> With me. You? Yes. You've given me back the meaning to my life, which is to give back meaning to yours. I'll save you. your own today? Gentlemen, do your duty. I'll be ready. What, sir? This may not come to the worst. Uh, come in, my little one. <laughs> Don't you dare touch her. If you wag her off now. Then what? Well, then, 
Uh, then. Don't you worry. There's no need for her to go anywhere. Today there'd be no point. Yes, you're right. As you're obviously aware, I've no intention of signing that statement. I'd rather give up my life than lose my human identity is all I've got left. <laughs> now, Professor, what are you carrying on about? You're not going anywhere. Why? I've made it quite clear I'm not going to sign anything. I'm not guilty! You don't have to sign anything. Your case has been adjourned indefinitely. Indefinitely. For the time being. For the time being. Without signature. What? Adjourned? That's right. Adjourned. You mean uh, no signature and no there either? For the time being, mine. For the time yeah, being. Yeah, but I don't understand. Why? Why don't you want my signature anymore? It would just be a formality. I mean, who needs it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's become quite clear that in your case, it would just be uh, superfluous. <laughs> 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 Are you trying to send it after along with me? <laughs> you said it, not me! <laughs> yes, but I mean, I, I want to go there. I don't know what it is. No, 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 I, I beg you. <laughs> I beseech you. I, I can't go on living like this. No! It seems you'll have to. No! You're not going to beg them, are you? Leave me alone! Thank you.